who would like a cartoon to fit the image. And, and, and the savagery that was meted out to poor John Major, um, you know, eating peas, a grey man wearing his, wearing his underpants on the outside of the triangle. I mean, these were. Wow, look at that view. It's absolutely beautiful. And I left the car about uh, half an hour ago and I'm heading up this estate track. And I tell you what, the hills are looking nice and white and snowy. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, it was a bit of a dicey, well, it wasn't dicey, but it was a bit of a snowy drive up here. A lot of fresh snows fall over the last few days, so I had to be careful. I took my wife's car as well. Uh, she's got winter tyres on her car, so that made it a lot safer than taking my non-winter tyre car. So it dealt with it fine when I got here. And I even got past that part in the road which was flooded. So where I am today, I'm hoping to be ca uh, tackling the two mountains that I couldn't get to. I don't know if you watched the, the vlog a few weeks ago where the road was flooded and I couldn't get in here. So um, yeah, the, the road's fine there. In fact, there was work going on when I drove past it. There was no water at all. I don't know, I don't know if they're maybe doing flood defences or some sort of flood prevention work there, who knows, but anyway it was fine. I'm here now, it's lovely and calm, there's not much wind, but the, the cloud is sitting quite low in the hills. So I can only f keep my fingers crossed that that cloud's going to lift and I might get some views when I get up here, but it's quite a long day. Um, as, as is the case with these hills, <coughs> there's a defined drop between the two summits, so it's quite hard to get two of these bagged in the, in the one outing. <laughs> Although saying that, uh, probably in the last video that you saw I did three of them. But <laughs> anyway, fingers crossed that this weather improves or the cloud lifts so I can get a view when I get up there. But it's going to be a long day. I'm not far away from the winter solstice. So there's not much daylight either. So I need to go get moving, keep moving and see if I can get to the top of these snowy mountains. Well, you can also possibly see, I don't know if you can make it out. I've got my snowshoes with me just in case I need them up here. <laughs> right, let's go and see. I made my way up the estate track with Loch Arcraig winding its way out behind me and before long I was into the snow and above the snow line and the snow was deep, it was also covering some deep bogs and really wet soy ground underneath it making the going particularly tough. I'll tell you, I'm in the uh, snow line now as you can see and at the moment it's quite deep and I'm going to cross a really boggy area so I'm actually going to put the snowshoes on this now that will make my progress a lot better it's usually, usually nicer with the snowshoes when it's that s lots of powdery snow but you don't tend to get that in Scotland and this is kind of a boggy landscape and I can't see where the bogs are so putting the snowshoes on is going to also help me sink into the bogs at the moment and maybe keep my feet a bit drier so I'm going to stop here Put them on, but I can see the hills behind me. I'm heading up over this one here, and then open round this. Well, you can't see the skyline because it's in the cloud at the moment, but this one over here is the final one before I drop back down. So it's not too bad, it's not too windy, it's quite nice. It would just be nice if this cloud cleared. Fingers crossed. Right, let's get these snowshoes on. <laughs> The snowshoes made an instant difference and really helped across this boggy ground. And the snow, although it wasn't super deep at this point, it was deep enough and I was only at 400 metres. And as I got higher and higher up the hill, the snow got deeper and deeper. In fact, in some of the drifts it was waist deep 
It was a surprisingly large amount of snow for such a lowly elevation. And although the snowshoes were helping greatly, progress was still really, really slow. It was super tough breaking trail through this deep snow. Tell you what, this is so tough. I'm just coming dropping down to a wee bela here before the final pull up to the top of the first mountain. And this this is a brace of corbets I'm hoping to do. And the thing with corbets is there's a defined drop, so it's a lot harder, well in my opinion, it's a lot harder to link the corbets together in comparison to the Monroes where you can sometimes do lots of Monroes in the one day. To do that with the Corbett's is a little bit more tricky. And this is tough. These have helped enormously, but there's a lot of fresh snow which has fallen. And I think, I'll make a decision when I get to the top, I think I'll just be re retracing my steps and heading back down. Because I don't think I've got enough time to get to the second one before it gets dark. Plus, uh, there's, there's a few steeper slopes on the second Corbett, and uh, this is perfect avalanche. Uh, snow, sort of fresh, unconsolidated, deep, wet, <laughs> horrible snow. So, yeah, I think I should be up there in about, I don't know how long it's going to take me. It's taking me a long time, I'm well behind schedule. So it might take me longer to get up here than I think. So we'll see if we get up here or not. I'm going to give it my best shot. But I'm going to stay safe as well and not get into any sticky situations. So just thank God I've got these snowshoes today. <laughs> right, let's go. So on I battled through the deep snow, and the majority of the snow had actually fallen within the last 48 hours, and there hadn't been any freeze-thaw cycles to consolidate it, one of the reasons why it was so soft and also so tough going. Anyway, for a spell as I, as I was going up, it seemed as though the clouds were going to part and it got a little bit brighter and really gave me some hope for having a cloud-free summit. However, that, that hope was short-lived as I made my way further up the mountain. In the light room, it's uh, coming and going. There's a bit of clearness coming behind me. But if you can see that, but every now and again, I'm just getting enveloped by clouds. It's very well. We all know the white is disorientating. I can't tell the the lie of the ground, and all of a sudden up into a wee drop in the snow. Which I don't see. It's very hard to judge distances and all that sort of stuff so we can't be too far away now hopefully I am tired this is taking out of me As I progressed up the mountain and got closer to the summit, the spells where I was locked in this white room, in this white-out conditions, got longer and longer. The cloud was thicker. It was occasionally breaking, but I was still needing to do some micro-navigation to make sure I wasn't close to any steep slopes, because, yeah, you wouldn't see them, or any cornices for that matter, until you were on top of them. It really is a disorientating place, being stuck in this strange, white room environment. Not a place to get lost. After a long battle, I was super happy to see the cairn and I approached the summit of Mielna Hildja 
I tell you, it was worth celebrating. It had taken me a long, long time, much longer than I'd planned, to reach the summit. But I was glad to be there. Oh, well, I've just got myself wrapped up. Put my hard shell on my goggles, because it's kind of this fine snow coming in now. And that's me at the summit of the Corbett. Milna Nilda, just down there. I suspect the summit cairn is usually a, bit, a wee bit bigger than that, but uh, this last bit is the only bit that's been scoured. The snow, I've just been breaking trail all the way up and it's been tough, really tough. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to bother with the second core, but I'm way, way, way behind. There's no way I'd get over there before it got dark anyway. So I'm going to head back down, just the same way I've come up. Hopefully follow my uh, footprints. It's not been snowing too heavily. And although it's a bit breezy here, it's not that windy down there. I think it'll be, it'll be a bit easier following my tracks because I'll not be breaking trail quite so much doing that. But uh, yeah, I've been in the white room for a fair bit to style actually. It's the first time it's kind of cleared up a wee bit. But uh, anyway, tough day. I'm going to go down. I'll head back down to get some shelter and I'll catch up with you there and do a bit of camera because at the moment it's a bit chilly up here and I want to descend and get drop some height quickly. Right. Let's go down and find somewhere to get some lunch. So I got my backpack on and left the summit of Mjolnir Hildja, which means Hill of the Hinds, apparently because on one side of it it gives shelter against the prevailing westerly winds. Apparently Bonnie Prince Charlie knew the area and wild camped at some point <laughs> on one of the summits round about here, or so the story goes. I think there's not an area in Scotland where he didn't visit. Anyway, there's no caves round about here. Or there might have been, but I wouldn't have seen them underneath all that snow. <laughs> I was glad to be going down anyhow and I was soon down underneath the cloud looking for somewhere to stop and have some well-needed lunch. So I've dropped down a wee bit, you can probably tell. I'm just gonna have a bite to eat here. It's quite nice now, the, uh, the summit looks like it's cleared, it's bloody typical. Had I stayed up there another 20 minutes, I would have, I don't know if I would have got any views, but, but it's certainly a bit clearer now and the, the clouds kind of coming and going behind me. So it's, uh, it's quite nice, a lot easier coming down in this nice soft snow, <laughs> I must admit. But I tell you what, it's hard work of breaking trail. I mean, I think from about, oh, I'll need to check and see how many kilometres I've, I've basically been doing with these snowshoes on. I don't think I would have made it without them, there's no doubt about it. Even just coming along the boggy bar part at the bottom, that would have been really tough work just uh, in my normal boots. So uh, yeah, they've, they've come in useful. They don't really get used that often in Scotland, certainly not on lower hills like this. Uh, if I was going up to the Cairngorms, I might use them a bit, a bit more, but... Um, I wasn't expecting as much snow in this Corbett, to be honest with you. Usually the Corbetts don't catch them, catch as much snow because they're a bit lower lower in height. But uh, there you go, you live and learn, don't you? Now, this is lovely, let's have my scotch egg. Fantastic. It was soon time to head back down to the car, and as sods law would have it, as I was heading down, the clouds parted and treated me to a spectacular sunset, and I got back to the car just as darkness was sweeping over the glen. A tiring but enjoyable day.